let's discuss your incredible national side. You, of course, won the World Cup in 2010, the Euros two years later, and that's off the back of your teammates winning in 2008. Is that Spanish side, is that the greatest ever international team, do you think? I don't know. It's really difficult to, I mean, to, to think about it because... Uh, I didn't see any national team in, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the, in the 60s. Um, it's true that we won a lot, um, but obviously when you compare it to the Brazil, to the, I mean, to, there, there are a lot of great national teams uh, in the history. It's true that at that time we were the best, uh, and it's because it was not about individuals, it was about being a team. Uh, we had an incredible amount of talent. Um, I was doing an interview this morning, and if you start to to really mention all all the players that we had at that time in the midfield, for example, we had Xavi Alonso, we had Busquets, Xavi, Iniesta, uh, Silva, uh, Mata, and I'm missing someone else, and Cesc Fabregas. So at the same time, in the same team, you had this amount of talent, seven players that they were, I mean, starting in any team in the world, and you had all of them uh, in the same national team, in the same generation. And this, I think, it was the key. Uh, and none of them was like more than the others. Uh, it wasn't about, I'm, I'm the one. No, no, all of them thinking uh, for the team. And this is what brings us to win uh, three titles in a row, 2008, 10 and 12. You know, when you look at that, that Spanish team and you mentioned the, the midfield there, I don't think there's been a better midfield than Busquets, Iniesta and Xavi. You obviously played with these guys at Barcelona as well. I mean, did that help the relationship when it went to national team? Because you were with these guys every single day. No, for sure. Yeah, and you have all the mechanism. You, you, you have the way that you play in, in Barca at that time, we played the same in Spain. Um, it's true that, for example, when we won the World Cup and then the Euros in 2012, that I remember that at that time Mourinho arrived to Real Madrid, there was a moment where the relationship was kind of tense, like difficult between Barcelona and Madrid and, and the national team at that time, I think, was 80% of the players from Barcelona or Madrid. Um, and for a period of time, 2011, uh, before the Euros, it, it was difficult to manage that. But uh, at the end of the day, you have to to think for the team and and the the best thing we could do is to work together uh, we forgot about what was happening on, on in our clubs and we won again the euros in 2012 uh, and i think we were like very professional at the time because the easy thing was to really in the national team to to bring all the trouble of the situation in the clubs and we didn't do that one of those players was Sergio Ramos who you'd have played alongside many a time um fair to say you, you were the best of friends off the pitch <laughs> uh, well, I think that when I started in the national team, I played with Puyol um, and Sergio Ramos was playing in the right back. Um, and with Puyol, w I felt that we were, I mean, the best couple at the time. We played together at Barca and then in the national team. It's true that Puyol started to have injuries in the knee and then he couldn't play anymore. And then Sergio came to play centre back with me. And really, I mean, I think that we did another, I mean, we were a very good uh couple playing in the centre defence of, of the national team um, and, and I think that we brought uh, Spain to win on 2012. In, it's, it's, it's very incredible to think about it but the Spain at that time, the, the World Cup uh, on 2010, if you see the whole team you can say it's a very offensive team mm. because all the, the players that I mentioned to you in the midfield but then we had Fernando Torres, we had Villa, I mean the strikers were very cool also. But all the games that we had from round 16, quarterfinal, semifinal, and final of those uh, of the World Cup, those four games, we finished 1-0. Mm. So the results, it's that because defensively, we, we did a very good job also. What do you make of the current then crop of young Spanish players now, this young Spanish team? And do you give them much of a chance going into the, into the Euros? It's it's difficult when you are in a transition period that of the one that Spain has right now uh, that you can win the title. You never know. I mean, they are not the favorites, and I think that everyone knows that. Uh, but for sure, they have a chance. Uh, they have to work very very hard, play together as a team. Um, and it's true that, in my opinion, France is the big favorite. Uh, England is there a little bit, maybe a little bit underneath France, but. I think that you can compete for sure. And then the rest are below. I mean, f Germany, Italy and Spain, I think that they are in process now of transitioning. 
Um, so let's see. I mean, in, in a competition like this that it's very short, everyone has a chance, really. What, what do you think England's weakness is, if we have one? The fact that uh, it's a long period without winning anything. Uh, I think that that's uh, important because when you are in a winning momentum, even if you won, I don't know, four years ago or six years ago, um, you feel that you can win it again. But uh, England, I think that the last big trophy was 96, maybe, with the Euro? No, no, we, in 66, 66, the only no, one. No, no, but Euro. No, we lost the Euros. Ah, uh, the 96 Euro. Yeah, so it's se just 66. Semi-finals, it's Germany on pens. Oh, we, because you, you, we lost against you and I thought... Uh, I think you knew that. that no, you no, just no, won no, 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 no. We beat Spain in 96. No, no, no. Yeah. I remember that you beat us and I thought yeah. that you won. I don't know why. So the only one is 66. Yeah. So I think this is a big, massive weight that you, that you have and because there is a lot of pressure and I assume that the country wants really England to win. And sometimes this can play f in favor, but also it can play negative if, if the team, they feel really the pressure. And you had that opportunity that you lost in the final, I think it was 2016, it was? No, Italy was the last year as we lost yeah. in, on penalties. Yeah, yeah, 2000, which year was that one? 2020. It was 2020. 20, yeah, because it was a year yeah. late because of so, COVID. So, I mean, that was a big opportunity that you missed, but I, I think that now you are in the moment of... of of really trying to, to win it. Uh, but the fact that you didn't win for so long, I think that maybe can play a little bit negative in a way of putting pressure to the team. Quick one as well. You, again, played in, Bush gets in front of you, one of the yeah. greatest midfield players holding. Rodri, we're saying the same thing about Rodri, who's been fantastic for Manchester right. City. How good can he be and can he get to the same levels as Bush gets? Well, Busquets uh, has been incredible, yeah. um, but it's true that Rodri, his last few seasons, has been just amazing. The final of the Champions League last year, scoring the goal, um, and also the seasons that he's doing. I think that City was losing until he started playing again. Mm. This means a lot. Uh, in in this kind of uh, in the tactics that Pep uh, proposed, always that role of uh, of that midfielder is very important for the team, and he really is the the player that makes the team really plays and move from one side to the other. When he's not there, the team really misses him, uh, mm -hmm. and it happened the same with Busquets when he wasn't around playing with us. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.